Tapatio tribute. Tabasco tribute. Spicy saliva. Hey guys, welcome to Wednesday Night Live. Yeah. 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 Oh, you guys are cool. Sick. Follow us on all social media platforms and let's get started. We got a game for you guys today. Now, you guys may have heard of Tapatio trivia, but you haven't heard of Tabasco trivia. Now, the game is I'm gonna ask some questions and if they get it right, the opponent takes a shot, but if they get it wrong, they gonna have to take a shot of Tabasco. So uh, it's right here. We'll see how it goes. All right, let's get started. Y'all ready? No. All right. No. Let's get the Tabasco in here. Also, here can you get some ah. uh, hand sanitizer? Ah. This too much. Okay. First question. First question of the day. Y'all ready? <laughs> yeah, ready. All right. Wait, wait, in the middle. In the middle. First one to grab this taco that middle, that yeah, gets ready. the answer. Ready? What does hashtag FYP mean? Go.
What's up, guys? We have $25 worth of Starbucks in our hands, and we're going to give it to a student, but there's a catch. We're going to ask them questions, and every time they get it wrong, we're going to take away $5. So let's go ahead and get to it. Okay. Let me take this. Hi, Jory. So basically, we have $25 for you. Okay. Here you go. That's all Starbucks gift cards. You can have it. The only catch is we're going to ask you trivia questions. Every time you get it wrong, we're going to take some money away. All right? You ready? Okay. So go ahead, and, go ahead and give it a spin. All right. First question. Oh, man. Okay, slang term. You have <laughs> 10 seconds to answer this question. What does let's get this bread mean? Start. Uh -oh. Uh oh. Come on, come on, Joy. Come on, Joy. Come on, come on, do. What? We at work. Oh, oh no. Correct answer is let's get this money. I'm sorry, bro. I'll take it. Oh, no. We got oh! Take one away. No. All right, go ahead. Give it another spin. Okay, you got this. It is. Oh, a Bible. Bible. All right. This next question. How many books in the Bible are there? Ten. Nine. Come on, come on, come on. Like the, whole the, whole the whole Bible. The whole Bible. Oh, no. Oh. Good job. Come on, I need one. Learn something new every day. <laughs> Dang. Oh. No. That's not a good job. Okay. Right, Give ahead. it another spin. Go ahead. You got this. Another Bible. Another Bible. Question. Okay. Okay, you have 10 seconds to name three disciples of Jesus. Go. Um, okay, okay. Peter. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Just name people. Just keep naming, just keep naming all the names you know. Mark, Matthew. There you go. Yes, you got, you got it, you got it. You get to keep that one. Nice. You get to keep that money. All right, you got it. Ooh. Oh, he almost had another. All right, common sense question. What is the biggest ocean in the world? That is, that is correct. correct. Nice. Oh, another common sense question. Okay, I think this is she's good. Question. She's good at common sense. Yep, this is the last question. Are you ready, Jory? Are you ready? You got this. Before Mount Everest was ever discovered, what was the tallest mountain on Earth? Oh no. Come on, come on, just say it. It was no Mount Everest. It was, it was, it was the largest mountain, the tallest mountain on Earth. That one tripped me up too. He asked me that question earlier and I couldn't figure it out. It's all right. Was that the last one? Was that, <laughs> that was the last one. Okay. Do you want to do one more for no, fun? Now, you can keep them. Now, you know, I feel kind of bad. I don't like taking money from people. So I'll give you a chance. I'll give you two questions to earn back five bucks. Deal? All right, let's do it. Go ahead. Hey, you got this. Okay. Oh, what is it? Oh, most that's embarrassing on, that's on moment. If you're in a car mm -hmm. and you're next to a train mm -hmm. and you're next to a plane, if you're driving 80 miles an hour, mm -hmm. how long will it take you to go 80 miles? Mm -hmm. An hour? No. You got it right. Let's go. Let's go. Give me some. Give me some. All right. Yeah, last question. Okay. Last question. Here we go. If it lands on it again. <gasps> oh, no. Okay. We have 10 seconds to tell you about most embarrassing moment. And you don't get $5 back. You ready? Go. Um, one time I was at Flip and Twist, which is a tumbling gym, and I was going to do a back tuck, and I psyched myself out in the middle of it, and I landed on my head. No. Oh my gosh, Jory, that's a good story. Right, Jory, well, here you go. Good job. You have twenty dollars of Starbucks to yourself. Good stuff. Thanks yeah, you don't have to share with your siblings or nothing. And Say what's tuned. up to everyone on Wednesday Night Live, by the way. <laughs> and stay tuned for more.
What's up, guys? My name's Jake. Tonight we have we have Cadence on keys. We got Claire singing. We got Sam on some some drums over here. Um, and we're gonna be singing a worship song called "Another in the Fire," which is actually um, before we dive into it, I'd love to um, dive into where the Bible talks about it a little bit. Um, it's a story in the Old Testament in Daniel, in chapter three, and it's a. Uh, it's this king, right? You, most of you have heard this story, but I'll just—I'll give you a quick recap. Um, there's this king called King Nebuchadnezzar, and uh, he builds this huge gold uh, idol thing, this statue, right? And he calls all of his officials over, his magistrates, his his judges, and he says, "Guys, come look at this. Uh, I'm sending a decree. Everyone who uh, is in my nation has to um, has to bow down and worship this along with my gods, right?" And he sends this decree, and then there are these three believers, these three uh, Lord believers uh, in, in our God, right? Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who won't bow down to this, this golden idol. And they get tattletailed on by some astronomers, and King Nebuchadnezzar is just furious about it. And he calls them into his temple, and he's like, guys, why aren't you, why aren't you worshiping my idol? And uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are like, we don't have to defend ourselves against you. All right, our God will save us. He has the ability to save us uh, and protect us from you. And even if he doesn't, we're not gonna worship your idols. And so that doesn't go over well with King Neb, all right? So they throw him into the furnace. They throw them into the, uh, the furnace that King, the King Nebuchadnezzar like threatened to do to anybody who wouldn't um, bow down to his idol, his golden idol. And uh, they throw him in and King Nebuchadnezzar looks in, he peers in, and he sees that there are four uh, men walking around in the furnace. And so he kind of freaks out a little bit, and he orders the, uh, the three men, the three believers, to come out. They come out, and their clothing is fine. Uh, they haven't been hurt at all. And um, that was kind of enough for King Neb to say, like, all right, I believe. Um, and all, all of the nation, all of my nation will now believe that. I'll, I'll force that on you guys. And um, so it's kind of a story of the, the strength of faith in these believers and the, um, like, what it can do, how it can change society, right? And I know under the circumstances of COVID, uh, under the circumstances of trials and quarantine, uh, we can ask God, like, where are you and, and what are you doing? I, I can't see where you are right now. And so, and, and, then, and then when we... When we come out of those trials, we look back and we see, oh, God was working to bring me to where I am right now. That's exactly what God was doing, and you can see exactly where his hand was. And so I just encourage you guys, God is working, and God is faithful, even when we aren't and even when we can't see him. So let's sing this song faithfully. Let's give him some praise. There's a grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in When I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There's another in the fire Standing next to me, there was another in the water, holding back the sea. And should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free, there is a cross that bears the burden where another died for me. My dead left for dead beneath the waters I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore If I fall in the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning Either way I won't bow to the things of this world 
thing hit I was at the gym next to me was this dude who had to have been at least my size if not a little bigger and he was throwing up some weight okay I looked at this dude and I was like all right he's not that much bigger than me I could probably lift the same thing that he's lifting that was my first mistake so I get down on the flat bench after these guys have been done they move over to another one I go rack up the weights get under it and try to do a little bit of bench action and then the thing happened that nobody ever wants to have happen while they're, you know, trying to exercise. I go to pull down the bar, and when it gets down there, I get stuck. I couldn't move it up. I couldn't push it up. I was locked in here, and I began to feel it, like, just press in a little bit more on my chest, and I said the thing that you never want to have to say at the gym, but I said, help, can I get a little help here? Help. Somebody, and then the guy who was there before me came over, comes over, lifts up the weight and puts it on the rack. And he said, hey man, you know, just take it easy. Don't worry about it. I said, oh, oh yeah, I, I was sick. I'm just getting over being sick. Like I've tried to make excuses for why I couldn't get the weight up. It was a very embarrassing moment. I'm sharing it with you for this reason. You know, comparison can get us into a lot of trouble. It really can. It can put us in some weird situations, some uncomfortable situations, and it can do a lot to us on the inside as well. I mean, maybe you've been there. Maybe you've been in the place where you've looked at someone else, where they're at, what they have, what they look like, what they've got going on, and you think, man, I wish I was like them, or I wish I had what they had. Maybe it's that girl with the new Burks or with the Air Force Ones, or maybe it's that guy with the girlfriend, or maybe it's that kid who just got their brand new car when they were 16. 
I'll tell you right now, they probably did it by themselves, okay? But you look at that and maybe you envy it, you want it, you compare yourself with it. Maybe you look at someone's followers on Instagram or the likes that they're getting and who's in their pictures that are being tagged and you feel like you wish you were in that spot. Or you compare what your life looks like to the highlight reel on someone else's social media and you start to feel kind of down about yourself. What that is, is that's comparison. And as we're talking about this concept of influence, right, this series is called Influencer, as we're talking about this concept, one of the biggest things that we have to navigate when it comes to people of influence and also gaining influence ourselves is the issue of comparison. You know, comparison can really do a lot of harm. It can really hurt. And God's word says something very clear about comparison. In fact, in God's word, it calls comparison envy. Envy, it's very similar. Comparison and envy are very close to one another. Here's how, you know, when you look at someone else and you see where they're at and you think it's better, you wish you had it, you wish you were like them, you want what they have. When that happens in your heart, when that happens in my heart, that's called envy. And envy is very explicitly called sin in scripture, believe it or not. Yeah, the Bible says that that's a type of sin. It's rebelling against God. And so what do we do with envy? And what's so bad about it, right? Because, I mean, what? We can look at Insta and get, you know, some outfit inspo or we can get inspired to lift more or whatever. But what's the problem with envy? What's the problem with comparison? Well, Proverbs 14.30 says this. It says, a heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. Envy rots the bones. You guys ever been to Apple Hill? You know, Apple Hill, you go out there maybe with your family, with your friends, go walk through some orchards in the fall time. I love it. I wasn't a big fan until I started dating my now wife and I began to really enjoy the finer things in life like Apple Hill. And so we went to this place that has grown to become our favorite farm. Our favorite orchard is called Delfino Farms. And when we go there, they allow people to go and walk around in their orchards and take pictures and run around. And so we love to go in there. But the thing I like the least about Apple Hill is when you're, you know, traipsing around in the orchards, me and my flip-flops, it always just so happens that I end up stepping on this disgusting, ushy, mushy, gushy, rotten apple. You know what I'm talking about. When you're walking and you just hear, yeah, it's gross, we're cringing, you're cringing at home, I'm cringing here. Look. When that happens, we're stepping on something that's been rotted, right? Inside of it, it is rotten. The insides have been eaten away by bacteria and fungi, and it may look kind of apple-like on the inside, but inside is nasty, black, gushy mush, okay? That is what the Bible is talking about it when it says that envy rots our bones. Envy eats away at our insides. And by the insides, it means the things that make up who you are, the things that maybe you hold the most close to yourself. So when you're envying someone, when we are comparing ourselves to someone, what happens is it starts to rot away at our confidence. It starts to rot away at our confidence. So if we are confident in who we are and we start wishing we were like someone else, our confidence starts to be eaten away from the inside. Envy also rots our happiness. If you're happy, if you're content with where you're at, you're feeling grateful for who you are, when you start to envy other people and compare yourself with others, have you noticed that your happiness starts to fade? Mine does. I, I notice that when I'm comparing myself to others or wishing I was in a different place or if I was more like someone else, it starts to eat away at my own happiness. It also eats away at your identity. If you are envious of someone, if you're comparing yourself with somebody else, what starts to happen is your identity, who you are, what you like, what you love, what you think, what you feel, everything that makes up your personhood, it starts to kind of rot away because you start to maybe try to try on things that aren't you. You say, hey, I'm gonna be more like this person. I'm gonna to try to act like this person. I'm gonna take this thing on. And we start to compromise our identity. But God has made each and every one of us a specific way. He's given you a unique set of gifts, skills and strengths and when we're envying other people what can happen is, is we start to miss out on the identity that God has built for us that we're supposed to live in and grow into because actually the world needs the way that God made you that's why you're here that's why you exist and so what do we do with that 
If envy rots the bones, what's the cure for that? Well, at the very beginning of that verse, in verse 30, it says that a heart at peace brings life to the body. A heart at peace brings life to the body. Well, how would that work? Well, if your heart is at peace, meaning you're not looking to the right, looking to the left, looking behind you. No, you're at peace where you are. You're content where you are. What happens is, is that's going to bring life. Life is the opposite of rot. Rot is death, decay, dying. Life is newness. Life is fresh. Life is thriving. So life to the body means that your confidence can actually be found in something that really matters. It's the peace that only God can bring. And so we can be confident in who we are. You know, we talked about humility a couple weeks ago and humility isn't just thinking that you're a piece of um, excrement. It's not, it's not just tearing yourself down. Humility is recognizing that God has made you a certain way with a certain set of gifts, skills, and strengths and being grateful for that but also recognizing that you're not God, but not beating yourself up to where you just think you're a uh, you-know-what. So we can be confident in who we are. We can have a heart at peace because of who God has said that we are. We also can have happiness. You know, a heart at peace is going to have peace. Why? Because it is focused on something outside of itself. It's focused on gratitude. Gratitude is gonna combat comparison. If we have gratitude, what will happen is we begin to become more thankful for the things in our life. We don't need to have that you know, new set of shoes or have more followers on Instagram or get the right amount of likes on our photo or the amount of for yous of your TikToks. I think I'm doing that right. We don't need that because our heart is at peace in who we are because of our thankfulness and who God has made us to be. And then finally, our identity who we are. We can be secure in that when our heart is at peace because we're not trying to just change every little thing about us, everything we don't like, everything we wish nobody saw, everything we're so embarrassed about. We can be secure in our identity, giving peace to our heart, which will bring life to our body. So what do we do? Because, I mean, clearly comparison is going to rot us away from the inside out. And it's really great that this verse in the Bible is telling us to have a heart at peace, but how do we get that? Well, we're going to get that from knowing Jesus. In Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. It says if you would trust God with everything, with your life, with where you're headed, with what school you want to go to, with what friends you have, with what your Instagram following is, with your TikTok shares, whatever. Like, if you would trust God with that, what God promises is that he's going to make your path straight. He, meaning he's going to direct you in the way that you should go. Meaning you don't have to worry about who's walking this way, who's walking that way, who's walking behind you. No, you just worry about trusting God, whatever God has for you, leaning on him and not in your own understanding, not in your own seeking to be greater or seeking to be more, but just saying, you know what, God, I'm content with who I am. And I'm going to let you continue to grow me. I'm going to let you continue to guide me and direct my paths. And that is a heart at peace. A heart at peace is trusting God. And so maybe the next time that we're in a place of comparison, wishing we had those shoes or wishing we looked like that girl or wishing that we had those kinds of friends, the next time we're in that place, maybe what we could do is we could pause for a second and remember that envy and comparison is going to rot us from the inside out. It's literally killing us from the inside out. But a heart at peace is going to bring life to our body and you can have peace in who God has said that you are, not in anything else. You can have peace in that reality. And that's a reality that'll never change, that'll never waver, that you can always count on no matter how much influence you have, no matter how much influence other people have, you could always count on that truth. Guys, we love you. We're for you. We will be together soon, okay? There are things in the works. So stay tuned to our socials and to all that good stuff because info will be coming to you shortly. But we love you. We're for you. Have a good time in Zoom group and we will see you soon. Peace.